My father is a unique individual and a person who absolutely has a passion for boats, for the sea, and for the way that that industry interacts with the community. When I was a kid, we used to joke, this is before the internet, when you'd keep a family photo in your wallet. And my father would open up his wallet and the first photo was of his ship. And the second photo was the family. And that was something that, you know, really said something about his passion and his love. And he always had a story to tell about it. Come gather round me sailors and listen to my song. Things that happen to me when I come home from Hong Kong. Do be way, Santy, my dear Annie. Oh, you New York girls can't you dance a polka. That's a sea shanty. Sea shanties were working songs in the old days, these great big schooners that came along the coast here and the big square riggers that run around Cape Horn. They all use songs like that to get the sailors to perform and get the work done, get it done easily and get it done with some rhythm. It was a part of just who he was and there was no other place to be but either on, around or under a boat. His whole career has been in sailing vessels and also tugboats as well. He owned the Schooner Adventure in Camden, which was one of the biggest schooners with no engine. He ran it for 25 years. The Adventure was without question the biggest boat on the bay. And he was the fastest and Jim was a fierce competitor. And if you were ever out in a race with him where it was competitive, it was difficult. A favorite expression. If you ain't the lead dog, the scenery never changes. It would just be a pleasure to watch her come up on me like I was in reverse. He was always the gentleman who didn't pass you to windward and steal your, your breeze. He would go to Lourdes and go by me like a freight train. You could hear his bow wave coming, and he would go swooping by, and it was always a thrill. He's a consummate mariner. There were many times on the schooner adventure as a kid when I would be sitting there and I would hear him telling these tales to the passengers or to colleagues, and the tales would always be true stories. Once he starts talking, he's hard to stop. Well, back in those days, there were no roads, there was no steam, there was no way to get goods from one place to another except by sailing vessel. And sailing vessel was the name of the game back in those days. You think about it, uh, without any roads, I think about the turnpike, you, every time you see an 18-wheeler, that would be a four-masted schooner going from place to place carrying cargo along the coast here, from New York all the way down east to Eastport and stopping in Rockland, Maine, the northern terminus of that. You see a UPS truck out there. That was a little two-masted schooner going in and out of these little ports. I think of my dad as a sea captain, but he actually was an entrepreneur and really built up elements that contributed to the town. We had a restaurant, really simple little quick and dirty burger shop uh, at one point that he ran with his sister. And that actually, he kind of expanded into many more, many more ways of creating restaurants and places that the community would come together. The first opportunity that I had to see what it means to be a part of a community was breakfast. And I used to see my father come together at Fitzy's or Cappy's Chatterhouse day after day with all the other captains, other members of the community, some of the other folks that he worked with, they'd come and they'd sit together and they would talk about whatever was the topic of the day. They'd talk about the weather, they'd talk about boats, they'd talk about what they were gonna to do to make things better for each other. And I guess I realized as a little kid sitting at the end of the table, this is what it means to be a part of a community. He is a boat collector. I can't even remember how many boats over the years. I mean, there's 30 more, boats, all kinds of different boats that he, he's had over, over the years. He's 89, so you gotta figure it has to be a lot of boats if you're a boat lover. <laughs> he used to say, 
The measure of a man when he dies is how much stuff he has accumulated. <laughs> and he had some wonderful stuff. He always tends to look at it as whether a boat is a part of a history. So many of the boats that my father would bring back, and much to sometimes the chagrin of our family to see him bring yet another boat back, would really have some historic significance. And so I think a lot of it for my father is about kind of con that continuation of a seafaring history from what it was many years ago in perhaps a distant glory day, what it can be now and, and what it can mean into the future. For my father coming back from his retirement to create the museum and create the community around it is really a big part of what it is for him to be a part of the community. To put it simply, we flunked retirement. We found this piece of property and it was on this old snow shipyard property where all these vessels were built in the 1900s. And Jim became very excited about we could create a museum. And long story short, we did. I think this is Jim's greatest legacy is the museum that he will leave. Not only the people of Rockland, but anyone who is lucky enough to wander in. This museum represents one of the finest maritime museums in that it's, it's more of a living, breathing museum. The museum is, in, is incredibly important to Rockland because the maritime heritage is Rockland's primary heritage. And his museum makes that a centerpiece of Rockland. His stories, they hit to the very core of what, what is important about the Maine coast and Rockland in particular, because he talks about Rockland and the Gulf of Maine being like the, the gateway to I-95 of its time. What I like about it, uh, and I like the way it's evolved, it's unpretentious. Some people will say it's a little bit like an attic, but I think it has real charm and it has real depth to it. And for a, for a physically small plant, the, the vessels that are there I mean, they really stand out. And what, what he has done in incorporating sailing, I mean, he's brought the water right to the museum. That's really one of Jim's strengths, is really his vision for the future. And he's really working to get kids out on the water and have them experience this maritime heritage that we have here that's so prevalent in our mid-coast. And there is actually working things going on there with boat building and boat restoration and people can sail from there. We have a sailing program and by the end of the week, those kids are out on the boats all by themselves and they're captaining their own boats out in Rockland Harbor and just having a wonderful experience in learning teamwork and learning to follow instructions and gaining experience and gaining confidence in what they're doing. One little kid, when I was talking to him afterwards, he was so excited. He said, I learned to sail a boat before I learned how to ride a bike. Now, <laughs> that can't get any better than that. <laughs> The museum is set up very much as a reflection of Jim. It's all his his idea, his vision of what he wanted and bringing it together this collection of things. So much of it is the way Jim tells his stories. He's an attraction himself at the museum. People truly come from all around the country to see Jim, which is always an enjoyment to see. They have stories that their parents sailed on Jim's ships or ate at the John Wanamaker when it was in Camden. Um, and they want to meet Jim, they want to see Jim. So he is just such a part of that museum, the very fabric of it. I think one of the reasons why this community award is so appropriate for my father is that he is really connected to this larger seafaring community. Thank you, Jim, for what you have made possible, which is the celebration of Rockland's maritime heritage. Uh, this community owes so much to you, and uh, thank you. So, Captain Sharp, uh, again, this is Eric Belay, president of the Penobscot Bay Regional Chamber of Commerce. In watching this film, you may have thought this was about your museum, uh, but in, in reality, it's it's about you. And on behalf of the members of the chamber, I am honored to recognize you 
with our 2023 Community Person of the Year Award. Well, I'm overwhelmed. I'm kind of left speechless. That never happens. Wonderful, wonderful honor. Thank you so much. Well, I certainly, certainly want to see the museum perpetuate well into the future and expand. It's it's too bad we have a a property uh, property limits there because I my imagination runs away from me in the middle of the night. Meg will tell you that. Uh, I come up in the morning with all these crazy ideas of what we should do to expand the museum even more. <clears throat> well, uh, I hope that we can take now, I have a few more ideas that I'd like to put together in the next year. And then I'd like to spend some time refining what we have there and uh, doing a better job of what we're doing. I feel that the first 20 years uh, in the museum is for expansion. The next 20 years in the museum should be to polish um, our results there and make everything first class. Wonderful museum, uh, welcoming more than just the old daughters like me that want to come in there and say, oh, well, back in my day, you know, when we used to sail these boats, I want to see the young people come in there too and become interested in sailing traditional boats and uh, understanding how the traditional boats were put together, why they were put together uh, as cargo vessels, as fishing vessels, as commercial boats, rather than just as a fancy fireplace yacht. Um, Long live Sail Power Steam Museum. And thanks to everybody. Thanks to my staff, thanks to my crew, thanks to my volunteers, thanks to the community, thanks to the Penobscot Bay region for being so good to me and accepting what I can do to uh, give back a little bit to everybody involved.